So you've been successful in securing the job. So all of the hard work's out of the way. But what do you do in the first 30 days? What's your plan of attack? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about what your focus should be, I at least suggest a focus, in terms of how you should approach your first 30 days. Now, of course, you don't have to listen to me at all. And this is probably gonna be applicable to those within the corporate space, those who are contractors within the public space as well, and anyone who's really in admin, some sort of delivery role, or some sort of management as well. The first thing I'll say is to make sure that you get your induction done. Now, most good organizations will make sure that you're set up for some sort of organization induction, and this usually entails some sort of training or information that will be useful for you from an organizational wider context, okay? So the sooner you get that out of the way, the better. If you've got any problems, of course, you can go to support staff or your line manager in the first instance to make sure that you get that ticked off. What I'd also add to that is to make sure that you save all useful documents in some safe space so that you can refer to them later on. The second thing is to make sure that you've got your IT in order. Now again, this probably or potentially may have been set up beforehand, but you just need to make sure. So maybe you wanna cross check any emails that you may have got in the beginning with regards to links to different things. You wanna check those links. Maybe you wanna check this against a buddy or your online manager to see if you have the same level of access. And if not, contact IT support straight away to get this sorted because I know there are some situations and I've been in this myself where for three weeks, I haven't had access to different SharePoints or Google Drives or whatever it may be. And it can be a nightmare, especially if you, know, you realize you're creating duplication much later on. So make sure all of the IT is sorted. Also confirm what level of usage you can use things to. So if, say for example, if you have Teams, can you use it to make external calls? Do you have a VoIP phone? Do you have an actual phone? Are you supposed to have a phone? Are you supposed to have additional sort of like software like MS Project or Trello or some of those different things? So understand what you're supposed to have for your role. The third thing I'd say is get familiar with the shared drive. So are you using OneDrive? Are you using SharePoint? Are you using G Drive? Are you using Atlassian? Like what different things are you using, again, that is specific to your role? Familiarity with this stuff is crucial. In addition to that, get familiar with the different folders and the organization sort of like structure when it comes to your organization or team, should I say. Now, sometimes there is no structure, there is no SOPs, no standard operating procedures in relation to the governance of using different files, etc., etc. So maybe this is something that you have to think about or raise in order to make sure there's some level of standardization. Now, if you're involved in something that is, let's say, agile by nature and is dependent upon political conditions, and you can use PESL as an example to decipher this, then there may be an argument that there won't be a neat structure, but my opinion is there's always a level of structure that you can have to some degree at least anyway, or standardization, should I say. The point being made here is to understand what that filing structure looks like because it's gonna be really crucial when it comes to later months. The other thing I'd say to that is to create your own filing structure, okay? So for me personally, what I like to do is to have my own personal drive. So this may be OneDrive or one part of my G drive. And I would set up different folders. So this may include things like admin folder, documents folder, a data folder, etc., etc. And there may be more specific sort of folders that may be useful, again, to your specific role. And so then I utilize these folders in order to house different documents that I can easily access easily. Now, I personally like to use drives within the cloud, okay, especially if that functionality has been set up within the organization. So for example, I'll probably house it on OneDrive or G Drive or whatever it may be, especially if it can sync up to a work phone, but I feel like it's just smooth that way rather than clogging things up on the desktop or in documents or wherever it may be. Because sometimes we know that documents can get lost in downloads or whatever it may be. So think about how you're gonna set up your local drives. The next thing I do is to develop a master log that captures key information. So this may capture things like, number one, my aims and objectives. Number two, any sort of like action. So I have an action log that usually houses the action item, the owner, the status and any comments as well, and maybe even the priorities and themes. 
The, the next thing I focus on is developing some sort of stakeholder list, whether that's internal stakeholders, external stakeholders. If I'm in a change management position, I may even sort of categorize things, but again, keep that confidential. And then there may be things such as like a raid log. So looking at the risks and assessing different things, the dependencies, the issues, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, I may have a key document sheet that again, houses key documents that I want to access. Of course, I will utilize my browser to basically save or star different keys sort of like online documents so I can easily access those things as well. So these are things just organizationally that are really important in order for me to be, I would say fluid and effective so I can be in a state of flow when it comes to my work. Now, once I've got all of those key things done and out of the way, what I'll also do is to make sure that I've set up a session with my line manager in order to really understand the culture, their sort of like local induction towards me as well, in addition to understanding what the key priorities are. And sometimes that's not always clear cut. Sometimes that's for you to decipher. Sometimes, especially in this day and age where there's loads of meetings happening, especially if you're working from home, you may not know that straight away. So you're going to have to do some investigative work, which leads me on to my next thing. Make sure you set up one to one sessions with different people, because again, and this is a point that I didn't address but you wanna check your organogram, okay? You wanna to check to where you're positioned in the organization so you know who's working laterally to you, who's working vertically to you, i.e. your line manager or direct reports or your buddies or other sort of counterparts. So understand where you're positioned, set up sessions with people, and what you're trying to do is to do some active and deep listening to basically not interview them, but formally understand, okay, who they are, what they do, get a gist for their vibe, but also understand the gap analysis because these different one-to-one -one sessions that you have are gonna give you a good basis in terms of the culture, but what are some of the problems and issues that are starting to arise because you can start to note this stuff. The next thing you also wanna do is to make sure that you're set up with every single meeting and distribution list that you're part of because you wanna miss anything, you wanna capture the information. But warning here, you want to be very clear about your expectations in terms of your working hours, obviously sensibly, but two, how you work as a person so that's not compromised because sometimes we lose the opportunity to do this at the beginning. And you want to make sure you set those boundaries straight away. Sometimes it may feel awkward. I've been in situations where people work crazy hours. I'm like, I don't need to do that right now just to prove something. If there is nothing for me to do or if I've expired my time here based on what I was supposed to do, I'm gonna take my time to go. However, I'm also happy to work above and beyond when it requires me to based on my own volition and autonomy as well. And again, that depends on the type of role that you're in. So again, set your expectations from the get-go, but also make sure you've set up different meetings so you know which ones to go to, whether they're formal ones, informal, et cetera, et cetera. What I'd also add to that is to not be afraid to not go to a meeting if it doesn't serve you. You should go to meetings if you're going there to learn and absorb information or if you are an active member of that sort of like group or community or group. Okay, so very important stuff. Before we continue, comment below and let me know one tip that you would give to somebody in regards to starting the first 30 days. Leave your comment below. Again, as you're developing these deep sort of like relationships with different people, you're understanding the organization, you're understanding what needs to be done. So start jotting down your ideas, start thinking about what things you need to do to be two steps ahead. Because usually, at least when I go into an organization, I'm trying to embed something. I'm trying to embed a system or a more efficient way of doing things because I guess in these 30 days, I'm trying to think about what is the quick win? What can I resolve? Sometimes you're trying to run to stand still and that may mean that you're being reactive by nature, but you're also trying to build something at the same time. Don't lose hope. If you have to do those additional hours initially, and again, I'm not sort of advocating for this, you know how to assess this, then do that. But it can't be a forever thing because again, your mental health is important. And so make sure you're in a position where you're actually creating something that will solve this reactiveness if it's possible to do that at the beginning to understand where you're at. The other thing I'd say is to create time to think. Okay, this is why I said, be very careful what meetings and sessions you go to. Don't go to everything if you don't need to. Because you need to understand the policies, the procedures, the strategic vision, the objectives, what's been done already, what is to be done. Okay, it, it just can't come from, let's say for example, people. Of course that speeds up the process, but you wanna read it in detail for yourself. So create that time to understand this stuff 
I'd also say create the time to understand what methodology is being used and if not, should be used. And if you could adopt that. Again, sometimes when we're in agile spaces or again, we're reacting to something out there that is external to us, we sometimes lose sight, I don't have the time to focus on how we can standardize the approach. And I think at least the methodology is important when it comes to some form of delivery or even if it is business as usual style work. So think about what that methodology looks like. Okay, really, really important stuff. And there you have it. Those are the main things I would say to make sure you do in your first 30 days. Essentially what you're trying to do is to get a feel, scope and understand the situation as it is. And what you can do, as I stated before, is you start to develop a gap analysis. You start to develop this understanding of the culture because then you can highlight the risks, the issues, the problems what needs to be focused on so you can develop some sort of working plan that you can present or at least do in the background to at least be effective and valuable within a workspace. Really important stuff. Again, doesn't necessarily matter if you're in a support position, delivery position, managerial position or not. Suggestions are important, of course. This is very dependent upon, you know, the sort of relationships or vibes that you have with your lateral or vertical partners but there are ways in which you can sort of influence and affect change as well. Because again, it's about progression. If you're in that space, at least anyway. If you like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And as always, understand, reach and expand. Peace.